Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. First of all, thanks to John for inviting me to talk about the uh, Kubernetes, the most popular Kubernetes for OpenShift. So for those of you who are not aware, so Kubernetes is so popular. All right. So the Kubernetes now dominating the whole market. So if you look back before 2000, so primarily, so when I started to work, mainly working with uh, all different uh, Unix platform and uh, all the database like uh, DB2, AIX264, all these, now you can't see. You can't see all these Unix platforms. So from all, because everybody moving to virtualization, then become VMware is so popular everywhere. And uh, since 2015, you can see here, containers, Docker containers, so popular. A lot of people adopting Docker containers. Then by the time 2020, actually the rise of the Kubernetes. So it's, it becomes the de facto standard for the container orchestration. So you see almost the, uh, Everywhere you can see the containers. If you ask where, where are you running your containers, most likely it's running on Kubernetes. Where are the Kubernetes cluster? So that's today's topic. I will show you what are the popular Kubernetes cluster. So 91% actually the adoption of the containers. So 91%. So it could be customer already deployed in production, or it could be it's in planning, it's testing. So only 9% I haven't think about the containers yet. Do you guys know CNCF? So Cloud Native Computing Foundation. If you look into their website, uh, there is a CNCF landscape. Actually, there are a lot of the different vendors in this space. So the ecosystem is uh, huge. So for any single person, you can't really load everything. So that's why I set up my Kubernetes meetup group. So I set up the group. So far, it's so popular in Singapore. So only six months, we got uh, close to 1,300 members. So feel free to scan the QR code to join us, to continue as a to learn. Not join us, to not just join us to learn. We are also looking for volunteers to speak. You, everybody probably learns something differently. So that's why I was talking here, learn, share, and continue to learn, okay? So talking about platform engineering, it's more in this particular category. So what are the typical Kubernetes? So it could be the certified Kubernetes distribution or the hosted Kubernetes cluster. It's hard to see, it's our chart, but there is another one, looks better, but still a lot. Uh, actually something is missing here. So Tuntole right now, I checked uh, probably two days ago, there are 149 certified Kubernetes. That's a lot. Basically you can't learn everything, but once you select the most popular one, you just learn a few of them and then you will be an expert. Because the whole market is hard to find someone really good at the Kubernetes. Okay, so I, I, one of the typical popular managed Kubernetes. I took a screenshot from, uh, there is a link here. It is from a CNCF survey that's back from 2021. So the most popular Kubernetes cluster, you can see Amazon EKS, and you can see Azure AKS and the Google Kubernetes engine. So these are the top three most popular manage the Kubernetes. Why customer good to manage the Kubernetes? Because it's hard to fine tune your Kubernetes cluster. If technically you can set up your own main a Kubernetes, but you need to prepare the Linux system, you need to install all the packages, and then you need to use the command to join the cluster together. You need to set up the control plane and then add the work nodes. It does take a lot of time. But if you want to get certified, you don't need to learn that hard. Okay, the hard way to, to set up the Kubernetes cluster. But if you, you, just, uh, you just need a Kubernetes cluster to run your application, 
you are copy you are you are a developer you just want to run your application you don't have to deal with the hard part to set up the cluster you just spin up a kubernetes cluster from one of the uh, kubernetes uh, uh, cloud providers if i go back to the last one so according to the survey so amazon definitely the leader a lot of people using amazon eks and then followed by aks and the google gk do you guys agree ECAS is the most popular one. What about ACAS? What about GKE? I actually, I, I don't fully agree on the two and the uh, number two and the number three. So I did my own survey uh, according to the LinkedIn survey. The, definitely Google Kubernetes engine is more popular than Azure ACAS. So also from uh, my conversation with uh, my customers, definitely I don't see Azure AKS is that popular yet, but definitely the three are most popular one. The other one is uh, Alibaba Cloud also, especially we are living in, here in Singapore, we are part of the Asia Pacific, uh, Alibaba Cloud also pretty popular. And uh, I also created a lot of videos. So in my spare time, I just created lots of different videos to show uh, a lot of people how to create a Kubernetes cluster from all, all different cloud providers. So according to my top 15 list, so Amazon UKS, Red Hat's OpenShift, and the Azure actually, Azure AK is not even in the top 15 yet. So Google also definitely pretty popular. Okay. And uh, you guys want to see a demo? Yeah, let's get started. So we talk about the names of Kubernetes is so popular, but how to spin up a Kubernetes cluster. So I will show you a quick demo. So Google actually is my favorite because you know there are a lot of stuff. For you. It's it's other cloud provider are kind of like a still far behind. That's why I show you from a Google Cloud how to spin up a, a GKE cluster. So if you if you don't don't have a Google Cloud account, you can just uh, go to cloud.google.com slash free. You can sign up a free trial account. It only takes about five minutes. I also have a video to show you how to sign up a trial account from a Google Cloud. And then once you have the trial account ready, you basically just run one command about five minutes or sometimes it could be six minutes. You will have a GKE cluster ready. And not only GK cluster ready, part of my automation, I also deploy a sample database just for you to try. And then once you've done the testing, you just destroy the whole environment. So you can clean up the whole environment. So if I move that one, you can see why I love the Google Cloud. Let me remove this one. So it comes with a 300 USD credit. So you can try all different uh, services from Google Cloud not just the GKE cluster, you can try some other services as well. And also it comes to 90 days to trial. So technically you don't have to use your laptop to do some testing. So you just spin up a GKE cluster, create a trial account, 90 days, $300 you can try. And you don't need to worry about if you overused, you will be charged. No, it's not going to happen unless you choose to upgrade. So you don't need to worry about that. But they do need you to, to provide the credit card details, part of the sign up. That's why I always choose Google Cloud for, for my testing as well. For some other cloud providers, are always only 30 days. Okay. So now let me show you how it works. So uh, bottom of the screen, you can also see Google GK is the first major cloud offering managed Kubernetes 1.26. The latest Kubernetes version, that's 1.26. Google is always the, the first one to release. Typically, they can be when the upstream, the Kubernetes cluster uh, release new version. They will release the GK 1.26, the latest one in about four to six weeks. But some other bigger cloud providers could be it could be a few months, even longer. Okay, so I will use Google Cloud as an example to show you. So how to do it? You just clone the uh, repository. 
uh, there is a little bit missing, but I will, we will share you the slide deck anyway. So you don't need to worry about. So I just copy uh, the clone the repository from all the uh, cloud shell, and then you run this command. And then followed by, you just uh, run the command, it's on the top, gke-deploy, and we will spin up a gke cluster. And once you've done your testing, you can just remove the whole cluster. So gke-destroy. I'm going to show you now. So this is my Google Cloud account. So I need to log into the Cloud account. Uh, it was already disconnected, so I reconnect. I actually, I already clicked the Cloud Shield, activated the Cloud Shield. And then you will see this screen. And from here, you just clone the repository. Uh, I need to copy the command. Let me go to my GitHub page. So you just go to g.ksug.com. So the first one is GKE Casa. So you click the link. And then move down to the screen. You can see the instructions. So the first command is you just uh, open Cloud Shell and then you copy the command. So once you copy, the, this is a one-time command. Once you copy, it will be sitting from the Cloud Shell. You don't have to copy again. So for my case, I already did that. So you don't have to copy again. So what I need to do is uh, if it's a first time, you need to also create the enable the GKE uh, API. So in this case, I also enable. So the next step is I just run this command to deploy a GKE cluster. So come back to the cloud shell. I need to change it to the directory, GKE. And then I paste the command here. Did I copy it? So, so I copy this command, paste it here in the press enter. So it only take about five, six minutes. You will have a GK cluster up running. And also you have the, basically you have everything ready to go. And you can immediately, you can try to deploy some more application to the cluster. And in the meantime, if you want to verify, you can log into a Google Cloud Console. You can see the new cluster is created. So any questions so far? Are we all good? Yeah. So it does take uh, about five minutes. So in the meantime, let me come back to the slider. So once you've done the, you created the cluster, you do your testing, you finish your testing, you can run one command to clean up the environment. Okay. So let, let's continue. But if you're a guy, sorry, I don't want to connect to the cloud. I just want to use my laptop. So how to spin up a sandbox or Kubernetes cluster. So that's the, I listed here a few options. There are actually a lot of the options. I only listed a few here. So for example, you might use the mini cube or micro KS, K3S. If you install Docker desktop or Rancher desktop, it also give you the Kubernetes cluster. So anybody try to any one of these? Literally just need a few minutes. You can have the cluster ready. So I'm going to give you an example how to set up a mini queue. Okay. And macro KS are also pretty similar, but you need a, a, a little bit more because everything is not enabled by default. So you need to in, enable one by one all the different add-ons. So let's try the mini cube. So how to do it? So basically you need a Linux machine, but uh, the Kubernetes node can be running on Windows, but I don't see many customers running on Windows. How to create the Linux machine? I can use my uh, my laptop, uh, which is running, running MacBook. And uh, if I, technically you can create a Linux machine, a virtual machine from a MacBook. So how to create a virtual machine? Or you can install Minikube on top of your Mac OS. But I don't like the idea. The reason is uh, when you try to clean up, you will always find something that wasn't clean up uh, clear uh, entirely. So that's why I install multi -pass. Anybody heard of uh, multi -pass? 
basically the, the idea is just to give you one command, you can create a Linux virtual machine from or anywhere. Could be Windows, could be Linux, could be uh, your Mac, Mac OS. So I'm going to use a uh, multipass. How to launch a virtual machine here? You just run multipass launch, give a know the name, and then how many CPU, how much memory, uh, how many disk you want to give to the virtual machine. It only take uh, a few minutes, you can have a virtual machine ready. And then I log into the virtual machine and I install Minikube to that uh, Linux machine. That will be a lot easier for me to clean up. I just remove the whole virtual machine, everything is gone. Okay. And uh, how to spin up a Minikube uh, a Kubernetes cluster? You just run Minikube stop and then once it's ready, you can run the Minikube, KubeCTO, get to nodes. You can verify if the nodes is ready. All good. So I'm going to show you how it works. So we are still creating the cluster. Let me. Okay, um, so you guys are using uh, VS Code, VS Code, yeah. So I also use VS Code. So I'm, I also, I, I'm in the terminal right now. So let me clear my screen. So what I'm going to do is, uh, so first of all, you need to install multipath. So just uh, from a Mac, you just run one command. Brew install multipass. It will install to your laptop. So similarly, if you go to, I also include a link. If you go to the multipass, the website, you can download it for your Windows or for your Linux system. And then how to launch a Ubuntu VM? You just run this command. So I'm going to run this command now. Uh, there are some problems. Let me see what's happening. Anyway, let, let me just do from the beginning. I'm going to reinstall the multipass. So it looks like something is wrong from here. I'm going to install. So when I install this command, it will, uh, it will prompt you there are some problems. So if, uh, if you already installed it, you just run, run this command to reinstall. So, sorry? It's, no, it's not a, it's kind of like a hypervisor. It allows you to create a multiple virtual machine. So it comes from a, a canonical. So that's the company. They're doing, they created the, the tool. So you have to already has a hypervisor tool? No, I'm not using the, uh, no, it's not a built-in from, uh, from Apple. I just install third party tools. Okay. So let me type in my password. So ho hopefully it just work. So I use this tool to spin up a additional VM for me to do the testing. Yeah. So I'm going to run this command again. Let's see. What about now? Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah I think uh, for the online attendees, yeah, because <laughs> I was using, uh, there is some challenges with the, with the projector basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So now you see it, within a few seconds, the VM is ready. If you want to verify, and you can run another command, multiple list. So now it will show you the new VM, which I just created. It's a node for young one. And the other one is I created earlier. It's already stopped. I'm going to use this uh, VM to do the demo. So how to log into the VM, you just run multi-pass shell to this node. Yeah, so I'm already at Ubuntu. And uh, from here, 
So this is uh, the next step is uh, how to install Minikube on Ubuntu. So you just, uh, I also copied the, uh, the command from their website. So I included in the slide deck, you see the, uh, there is a link how to install Minikube. Uh, Minikube also can be, as I mentioned earlier, it can be installed on your Mac, but I don't like the idea because when it comes to clean up, it, it's a hard. So I'm going to run the next two command. So this step basically depends on how fast the network. We're going to download the Minikube from the internet and then to uh, start to basically to copy to your local machine. So any questions, feel free to interrupt to ask, okay? And uh, the Minikube is running. Well, I mean, we already installed a mini cube. You can verify the version. So it is running the latest version 1.29 right now. And the next step, we're going to start mini cube. So how to start? Do you just run mini cube start? Okay, here's a problem. I actually, I deliberately bring this problem to show you. Okay. So to, to allow it to run, it does require any one of the drivers listed here. You can use Docker, you can use KVM2, you can use a Portman, you can use a VMware or you know, VirtualBox. Because I don't have any one of these, so I can't run the mini, mini queue. So that's why I in included the instructions here. So you just do this command to install Portman. Yeah, it looks like it wasn't installed correctly. Let's see. Okay, it could be installed in a different pass. Yeah, it takes a while to finish the install. Yeah, I don't know really why it doesn't work. But basically we're running the same command. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now it looks like it's okay. And uh, then we can run the mini cube stuff. Okay. So in this case, we're going to download the Kubernetes 1.26, the images, and then bring up the cluster. So shortly you will see the cluster will be up running. So while we're waiting here, let me come back to the one we created earlier. So you can see, it. you see why I love Google Cloud? This time, less than five minutes, the cluster is up running. And how to verify which cluster version. So you just run the, you just run the command. Let me show you. If I do the kubectl or get a node, you can see my cluster is running 1.26 and uh, it's a one node cluster. It was running uh, about nine minutes ago. So this is my cluster. So 1.26. So my name is a Kubernetes guy. Okay. So this is my cluster. And they, if you do some of the verification, let's say, let's see what port is running here. So these are, these are the, by default, it's already installed all these containers and it is running. So the bottom of the screen, that's the application PostgreSQL database. Also part of my automation, it's already been installed. So any questions about the GK cluster? It's so simple, so easy, yeah. I created the automation uh, previously. I was created this automation. It's mainly for myself mm -hmm. to, to learn and then, and then to show customers customer how to, how to clean up the DK DK cluster. cluster. And how to, how clean, to up clean, clean up so quickly. quickly. So if you want so to verify you... from the web console, you can go to, can go to... So the, so the hamburger icon here. Icon here. And then under, and then under Kubernetes, Kubernetes engine. engine. And then you can, and then you can the click the clusters. So it was, so I'm, I'm I click in the new tab, new tab. you can, you can see my cluster is running. running. So, I so I was running US from a US Central one. So the, so the reason, reason is the US Central one is different, yeah. Uh, 
I'm going to close this uh, Clarosil. So you can see this is a one node cluster to CPU eight gigabytes memory. And if you cl click the cluster details, you can see all the details. So 1.26, uh, only one node. So you can see all these details. Any question to the GK cluster? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, how much time? <laughs> yeah, Google is the fastest here, the five minutes. So the AWS actually it doesn't take a long time. How long? A few times. I mean, like a, a, a three times. You need like a fifty minutes or even more. Okay, but it doesn't change the factor. AWS market share is the number one. Yeah, because the uh, their number of services, the breadth and the depth of the services is huge, and a lot of people are using it. So Google. The Kubernetes cluster was born from Google. They invented the Kubernetes, but they are not doing very well in the sales marketing. I don't, I don't think that they are doing very good. But technology-wise, I love it. So Microsoft Azure also, they did enhance recently. So the, the latest version from Microsoft Azure, that's 1.25. So they also make it five minutes, which is amazing. So previously, a previous version Azure AKS, it doesn't take about eight minutes. So last time I just tried the AKS, it only take five minutes. But remember, it's not the latest; it's a minus one. Future of the endos. Hmm. The I never tried the endos, but it should be similar. Yeah. They do require some special before I actually, I don't know. I haven't tried the Anthos. So basically, the Anthos is the GK on premise. You can think about it, it's a GK on premise. Istio. Yeah. Oh, that's a different topic. Yeah, yeah. No. That... So Istio is a service mesh, it's on top of your GK or other Kubernetes cluster. So the, 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 the Anthos is uh, their on-premise options. So similar like uh, AWS, they also have their options like Outpost or Azure, they have their Azure stack. Yeah, that's the Anthos system. But part of the Anthos, they also have the GK on-premises. Yeah, yeah, also, that's a very good point. Yeah, yeah, I think also Anthos comes with a multi cluster management or multi cloud. So, when you talk about a hybrid or multi cloud, Google also ahead of other guys because the AWS is so big, they don't really want to talk about multi cloud, they just want everybody to just stick with the AWS. But when Google started, they want to get customer from other cloud, so they, they also allow you to run the GK from AWS. Any question about the GK? I'm going to show you the, the one. So we are almost uh, about the time, right? So you can see the cluster is running. Now you can verify. So you can verify how many nodes do you have. So for example, here, I only have one node. So first time I'm going to run, I need to install kubectl. It's automatically going to install. And there you can see, I got one node. The node name is minikube, and it's running as a control plane. Uh, it's about four minutes ago, it's running 1.26. So that's used the uh, minikube. So in my demo, I basically show you how to launch a GK cluster from a Google Cloud, how you can create the sandbox Kubernetes from your laptop. Okay, let me come back to, to the slide. I think that we are almost done, yeah. So once you have the cluster ready, I also 
Yeah, I, I only have a few or one more, maybe two slides to talk about your day two management challenges. So you have your class already. Do I need a backup? Definitely you need to back them up. So do I need to secure my cluster, secure my containers? How secure my Kubernetes cluster? How secure my containers? So basically you don't really have any idea unless you have a tool to give you some more you know, insights. So I listed here, so how to back up your containers, you can leverage, that comes another point why Google Cloud, Google is the only cloud provider, provider that manage the Kubernetes backup, native tool. So other cloud don't even have the tool yet. You can only use third party. And how to secure your containers. I also have a few links here. And also how to migrate the containers. So from my YouTube channel, I got the, now probably around 70 plus videos talking about all different Kubernetes. Yeah. So feel free to follow me to learn. And just including a few reference links. So, and if anyone interested here is another link about a Kubernetes data management uh, group. And on my user group, you, you can basically just click the link. Also, I have a group chat. So I will share the slide deck from our group chat. Feel free to join our group chat. So everybody from that group is about Kubernetes. You can ask any question or whatever. It's a hard, complex question or simple question. Kubernetes learning. Do you guys want to get certified? So I only share the, a few links, which I did. So for example, when I do the beginners, the KCNA, I actually Actually, did this one, the last one, uh, that's my fourth certification. The first one I did is a CKA. So when I was doing the CKA certified Kubernetes administrator, I was using plural side. But then I was, when I was doing the developer CKA certification, I was using uh, Udemy. That's the, but there is a course from a code, code cloud. It is very good. Especially their practice uh, questions is uh, super good. And then I feel like uh, you should, for anyone who wants to get certified, you should use uh, either Udemy or from a code, code cloud. Depends on your, sometimes Udemy actually give you a super discount. I, when I was doing the CKAD, I only spent a $15. So right now it's pretty expensive. I saw it's like a, a hundred plus. And uh, you can also try killer shell. So killer shell, that's for you to do the simulator. Before you do the exam, you can do the simulator. In the bottom will have the link. I think that that's, yeah, last slide. So if you want to try other Kubernetes, I also created the automation for Amazon EKS, for Azure, AKS, and also OpenShift, and also Alibaba Cloud, etc. I think uh, that's all I want to talk about. I probably overused uh, your time. <laughs> Thanks, very much. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. I hope it's useful to you guys.